Hey guys, David here. Welcome to Digital Outlook. Got a good video for you today. But before we begin, if you'd hit that like and subscribe so we can get this information out there to as many people as possible, that'd be fantastic. So what I wanna talk to you about today, guys, are three principles for successful investing. Now, the first one of those principles is perspective. Now, most of us have been raised to go to school to get a good education so we can get a good job and earn a great income. And there's nothing fundamentally wrong with that. I mean, having a good education is commendable. And who doesn't want to have a great job that gives them a good income? But there's something off with that kind of thinking in a way because we've trained ourselves to work for money rather than have money work for us. You see, an entrepreneur will take what money they have and invest it in an idea or a business with the expectation of getting a profit. And it changes, having that kind of mindset, guys, changes the relationship that we have with money. Because now we look at money not as a commodity to consume to meet our needs, but rather as a tool that we can use to bring about a great harvest in our life, a profit. So let me give you an example. Let's say I go to the store and I buy a bag of apples. And I bring the apples home, we eat the apples, they're delicious. Maybe my wife or, or I make a pie with that. Eat the apples and they're gone. Now, we enjoyed the apples, nothing wrong with that. But let's say I save the apple seeds and I take those apple seeds out and I plant them in the ground. I'm not expecting to get one apple for one seed. I'm expecting a tree to come up with heaps of apples on it and not just for that season, but for in future seasons to come. And then again, seed producing seed, apples producing more seed that I can sow again. And that is the shift that we need to make mentally when it comes to our finances. That we don't see money as just something that we use to meet our needs, we actually see it as a tool that can change our lives. So that's the first one. Now the second one is developing a generous attitude. Now we've all seen that movie Wall Street, or most of us probably have, and there's that famous quote from Gordon Gecko that says, greed is good. Now guys, there are so many more motivators for accumulating wealth than greed. I can't wait for the day I'm able to pay someone else's mortgage off or to establish a scholarship so a kid that couldn't normally go to a good school now can or to invest in a foundation to support a cause that I really believe in. Now, why is this important for us as investors to develop this kind of generous attitude? Well, it breaks the hold that money has on our life, the fear of losing it, the fear of not having enough because we're able to release it. We're able to give that away and, and make a difference in someone else's life. I know for me that this really helped me um, to be able to look at money differently and to not be bound by it. Now, I know a lot of times we'll say, well, yeah, David, when I get wealthy, I'll do that. When I have the money, I, when I get wealthy, I'll do that. Well, guys, start small. It's been my experience that if you haven't learned to do this, when you're just starting out, that by the time you actually do become wealthy, you, the probability of you doing it is actually quite low. So that's the second thing, have a generous attitude. Now, the third thing is be strategic about your investments. So guys, there are lots of investments out there that are based, have no real world utility at all and are only based on sentiment. And for me, I would just advise to avoid those altogether. Well, that's what I'm gonna do anyway. I don't wanna say advice because it would just be my encouragement to advise them. Now, there's four things that I do when I look at any investment strategy. The first thing I do is I ask myself, well, what real world utility does this investment have? What problem is it solving? And the second thing I look for is, are there any companies out there that are utilizing this digital asset? And if so, who are the management team? What talents and abilities do they bring to the table? The third thing I look at is strategic partnerships that are established with these various organizations that help move forward the use case or the ecosystem of the digital asset. Now, the fourth thing I do is I take a look at prior price action, 
do a little bit of TA. And at that point, I, you know, kind of see where the future price is going and I decide if I'm gonna get into it or not based on my risk tolerance. Now guys, those three simple principles, when you start to employ those, those are gonna change you. And that change is going to bring about an, an opportunity for you to be much more profitable. You're gonna be able to change your idea, your thinking about money and have that money work for you. Money's not gonna have the same hold on, it, on you that it has before because you're freely able to release it. And you're not gonna get um, roped into some, you know, really bad investments because you've been able to practice that discipline of researching what looks good and what has a decent prospect of bringing you a, a favorable profit down the road. Now, before I go, guys, I just want to show you something over here. Take a look at this. Now, this pond is out in the front of my uh, complex, the place where I live. It's very beautiful. And oftentimes we see like ducks and geese out here. And it's actually quite nice. <laughs> so, guys, that's the video that I have for you today. And if you found any value in it, hit the like and subscribe. Tell your friends and family because I really want to help as many people with this information as possible. And we're doing it together, guys. I can't do this without you for sure. So in the meantime, and in between time, stay safe, be blessed, and I'll catch you in the next one.